the wonderful thing is that JT, John Torrance, who just stood up, which uh, Rob gave a nice big hug to, has been a mentor to so many, actually in this room, certainly was one of mine in the early years, and uh, and is a big one of Rob. So John, it's nice to see you, number one, and, and uh, thanks for having such an impact on, on everybody. And then one other quick story is, you know, back in the old days, we kind of did things to blow steam off, and it wasn't just go to the top of the Hilton bar and have drinks, and it wasn't just to be crazy, but a lot of us brokers in different places, we went out and played video games. You remember Pac-Man and Space Invaders and Asteroids? No, of course you don't remember. Yeah, because you're, and yeah. Yeah. So I found a little something out about Rob today that I never knew. I used to go to Jilly's East over in, in Montlake, and that's where we played Asteroids all the time. We got dollar pitchers. Remember dollar pitchers? Can you can even imagine that? And uh, I found out today that Rob used to go play video games. You ready for this? At that uber sophisticated establishment on the east side called Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your award winner. Well, out with Brent Nicholson, we'd cold call in the morning and then we would reward ourselves with lunch at Chuck E. Cheese. And Chuck E. Cheese had the best video games at the time, so Brent and I would play video games. That was a true story. And Jilly's was good at the dollar pictures, too. Um, my heart, my heart is on a sleeve. Um, I just want to thank everybody for this incredible honor. It's just incredible. Um, I've got to tell you that I, I'm humbled and I'm honored by the recognition. And I, I never imagined I'd be the recipient of a award like this. It, it just, it blows me away. And it's kind of a surreal moment for me for a couple reasons. Because, number one, I'm still kind of figuring out what a grown up, what it means to be a grown up, and uh, what it means to be re receiving an award like this. And secondly, I, I can't help but think that this is the industry's way of just telling me that I'm old and it's time to shuffle <laughs> off. So it's one or the other. Um, in any event. You know, when you start a career, you don't think about what it will look like at the end. You're too busy trying to keep your head above water, and you're trying to do what's best for your family, your reputation, and of course your clients. And you aren't thinking about legacy or anything else like that. But you know, I have to tell you this. Being a broker is absolutely the best job in the world. So what I want you to do now is just look around you. Look at the person you're sitting next to and look into their eyes, and if you're, if you're, fortunate, enough, if you're fortunate enough to be sitting next to a, com a, a broker, a commercial real estate broker, I want you to say thank you. Yeah, do it now, say thank you. Thank you. Because, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> because without that individual, without that individual, without their commitment to excellence, without their primal desire to chase an idea and to chase risk and to, to connect people together in a relationship, none of us would be here today. We wouldn't be here. Because I'll say it again, being a broker is absolutely, unequivocally, and positively the best job in the world. And I respect each and I love each and every one of you that have chosen this as your life's work. Now, Chris tells me I've got about 20 minutes, so I'm going to use them all. So you can take a seat, Tom, if you want to. <laughs> and I want to take you back into the time machine for a bit. The year, the year was 1979. I'd been running CB. John Torrance hired me. Well, I owe my, owe my career to. Thank you, John. And Cobalt Bank Commercial, as, as it was known back then, I've been running it for a couple of years, and a gentleman by the name of Tom Benner called me. Now, Tom was the executive director of a small, fledgling organization known as the Commercial Investment Brokers Association. And he wanted to meet with me and Joe Preston of Kidder, Matthews, and Segner, who was the president of SEBA at the time, to see if Coldwell Banker Commercial would be interested in joining the small organization. So during that meeting, they invited me to a board meeting, which I went to so I could see how they operated, and I took a look. Now, remember, back then, 1989, there was no internet, and I think there were cell phones, but they came in a suitcase, or they were the size of a brick. And 
the way we shared listing information back then was by creating flyers and brochures. They were all handmade and they were hand delivered and they were usually batched weekly to the office and you'd get the, you'd get the package from Kidder Matthews of all the brochures and they'd be distributed in your mailbox. And that's how we disseminated information. It's unbelievable. Uh, and by the way, there was not a single broker at Coldwell Banker Commercial then that thought that the mighty and powerful Coldwell Banker Commercial should be joining a small collective of, of sole proprietorships. Just what was beyond their thinking. At CB, we were way too cool for school. We were too big to joining an organization like that. And we all felt that the quality information resided solely in the hands of the big brokerage companies and nobody else mattered. We didn't care about the small players. It was the big players that mattered. But that was back then and the information landscape was changing and I thought, what if we could do more business by exposing our listings to a greater universe of potential clients? I said, what if we could enlarge the pie and cast an even wider net? I also saw the potential to cut back on flyer expense and brochure expenses by having it being published. And so, guess what? SIBA offered the perfect solution. Well, maybe it wasn't perfect because back then it was a phone book size catalog <laughs> full of listings with tiny black and white pictures that came out once a month. And that was the multiple. Does anybody have a, I wish we had a copy of the book here. Arvin, I know you, you must have a, <laughs> but still the thought intrigued me. So the first call I made after understanding all this was to my good friend and competitor Jim Bowles, who was running Cushman at the time, and he too, like me, was intrigued by the idea, and he and I decided to come aboard and join SEBA. And that was the genesis of what we call the big brokerages joining SEBA. The big would kick in their quality information and share a broader and much more diverse audience of of potential and it gave the a credibility to a fledgling organization and it added rocket fuel to a really great idea. So over time, SIBA moved from the printed book to invest, uh, of just investment opportunities to CDs and then to an online product and then into the digital age where we became the best multiple listing, commercial multiple listing agency in the country. didn't stop there, we continue to innovate with our legal library and our forms access and our co-brokerage agreements and our multi multidisciplinary sales and uh, lease data. And guess what? It was a heck of a good time doing it. It was so much fun. I got to meet people like Arvin. Arvin, raise your hand. Who to this day still on the board. Thanks for your leadership. In the likes of committed individuals like Marianne Christian Griffith and Mike Scott, and Howard Montour, and Mr. 99, John Peel, and Jim Osgood, and Paul Childs. None of who are here today, by the way. I mean, I think they're still with us, but <laughs> they're all wonderfully and wild independent, independent brokers in their own rights, and they just were looking to make things a little bit better. We also had terrific leadership in those days from Katie Kolchek, and Tricia Deering, and Michelle Mills, and legal advice from Chris Osborne and Kerry Buckland and, and now selfless leadership from Chris McDougall. Chris, thank you for that. Those were the good old days and thanks for allowing me to reminisce for a moment. Uh, just, I'm, I'm amazed, I'm baffled at how far we've come. It's just incredible. So to every broker that I've ever had the opportunity to work with, and there have been hundreds, I want you to know that I am in awe of your talents and I appreciate and totally respect what it is you do for a living every single day. It's never easy, but it's also rewarding. And like I say, without you, none of us would be here. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank my family for always believing in me. There's no way I'd be here without their love and support. Tina, you are <laughs> my source of light and inspiration. And thank you for your love. Uh, this award is proof that if you give your best to keep moving forward and you focus on wanting the best for others and you care about the people around you, that good things will happen. I'll always cherish this award and I want to thank you so very much. I love all of you and let's go get some cocktails. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> <laughs> Greg, can you stay? <laughs>